Once again to the glorious Derbyshire Peak District, more specifically a spot called Open Hag, overlooking the Woodlands Valley and over into the Vale of Edale. And what a view that is today. So it is April the 28th, 2016, and we've got snow in the Peak District. Granted, it's only a small amount on the very highest of tops on the mighty Great Ridge over there. So today's little wonder that I'm out to do involves parking down at the Lady Bell Reservoir near the Ashopton Viaduct. I've headed over Crook Hill. I'm going to head up towards Rowley Pasture, towards Allport, and then back down through the forest to the chain of reservoirs, Howden, Derwent, and back once again to Lady Bower. So it's going to be a very changeable weather day today, I think. I'm uh, kitted out with the waterproofs because, I mean, this morning it's glorious as you would well imagine in the glorious Peak District. But at around about lunchtime, it's due to turn quite bad. Heavy rain, possibly snow, so I've got full waterproofs at the ready. So let's head over Rowley Pasture towards Allport and to the towers there. I'm just crossing the bridleway here near Hag Farm. And this is quite a popular mountain biking route just down there, obviously, at Hag Farm. A nice little spot of downhill. Just over there is a very nice spot of downhill. But we're heading this way. Okay, so here's the northern edge of Kinder Scout. You've got Crookston Knoll just up there where I camped a few months ago. Right on the end there, you've got Fairbrook Nays. I can hear the curlew. There they go. Welcome to the new bird hide here at Oldport Castles. I think this is quite a new instalment because it's been about two years since I was last here and it certainly wasn't here then or I didn't notice it. It's a nice corrugated structure with uh, camo netting but I believe it's here because if you read the sign there there is supposedly peregrine falcons nesting on the cliff edge over there. So you can just see down there one of the towers. This is a huge landslip that happened supposedly around about 300 million years ago. And just over there is the cliff edge where we're gonna look for some peregrine falcons. So we've not seen any yet, but this is what we're looking for. Well, I've seen a raven so far. Apparently they nest here too. So while I'm in the bird hide here, sheltered from the wind and you can actually hear me, I would just like to say a huge thank you to Zed Outdoors. Now Zed gave me a shout out a few days ago in one of his videos. He was recommending three bushcraft channels. So a big hello if you've followed Zed's advice and headed over to my channel. Welcome. 
Also, hello to everyone that's been subscribed for some time. So on my channel, you'll find the odd bushcraft video, but I love the outdoors, so it's walking. I'm based here in Derbyshire in the glorious Peak District, so a lot of my videos are around this sort of area, walking, mountain biking, wild camping, but I do try and get further afield. You'll see that my last video is from Scotland and also I'll fit in some videos from my travels as well. But thanks again to Zed for the huge shout out. I really do appreciate it and welcome aboard to all the people that have subscribed recently. So there's a logbook here as well that people have put sightings. A lot of the sightings are things like lions, giraffes and golden eagles. So I thought I'd stay sensible and just put that it was very windy, no sign of peregrines sadly, but it was a welcome break from the wind. Also, I put the website address there as well, peakroost.com. So the wind had died down a little bit, so I thought I'd come out and quickly show you the tower. If you can imagine from the opposite side of the valley, that would be why they'd call it a tower, quite conical. Here is the cliff edge. In fact, there's the hide. Okay, so I think I'll gather my things and move on to the next spot. Close the door so it doesn't bang. That was a very welcome little spot for lunch. And now we're going to head over this sort of direction and then down into the valley, into the upper Derwent Valley. So up that way is Bleaklow and Bleaklow Stones. But we're going to head down this way now. It's now time to get a move on. We are in a race against the weather. The rain is due to arrive supposedly around about one o'clock. So that's why I'm doing the route this way around. I'll be back down in the forest by then. But it'd be nice to test out the new Rep waterproof, although I did test it out in Edinburgh when we were up in Scotland last week. So we're now descending towards the River West End and the Howden Reservoir, which you can just see down there. But we're passing a row of grouse shooting butts. And I can imagine many a grouse has met a sticky end. So we're descending down into the forest now, which looks like it's had a new road driven through it, obviously to service the grouse shooting butts. So I've just finished descending down the very well graded path and we're down now by the River West End which is just over there. This flows into the Howden Reservoir. It's a nice little forest down here actually. The reservoir is obviously full because in summer it doesn't rise to this level. So I wonder are the reservoirs Howden and Derwent tipping over the top? We'll soon find out. So here we are, right on schedule. It's about lunchtime and it's just started to snow. A little bit of sleep perhaps. Here we are, here's the Howden dam wall. It looks to me like it could be flowing over the edge. Yep, it's flowing over the edge. Let's get a better view if we can. There we are. Be nice to live in this house, wouldn't it? So, as we walk down along the edge of the Derwent Reservoir here, we've reached another interesting spot. It's, this is the remains of Birchinlee Village. I think it was called Tin Town. That was its nickname. And the reservoirs were started around 1901. Uh, each three were completed at different times. And it's amazing to think that back then this would have been a thriving little village for the workers. But not a great deal remains. But we'll have a look at what still is here. So just up on the bank there would have been a row of houses. And down there you may be able to see the remains of a bridge because there was a railway here that serviced these villages and also, as you would imagine, to bring the materials up 
to build the dam walls and various other things surrounding. So welcome to what once was the Derwent Canteen and just there is the cellar. So here we are, there's a small map of what the town used to look like. As you can see by this image, we are here and there is a road branching off just at the top. I think we're a little bit further back because I'm going to assume that that road is just that one there that heads up to the top level. So we were here, all manner of different huts, a school, an allotment and Birch and Lee Farm right at the end there. It must have been quite a sight. So today the reservoirs look to be pretty much full but if you were ever to come here in summer or a time of year when they're quite low all manner of things are revealed. Just back there where the railway line would have headed across there is various like support posts for the bridge that carried it across that little section there. Also further down, I do believe on the Lady Bower Reservoir, there used to be the church but I think that was dismantled. The church steeple used to stick out of the water at one time but I think it was dismantled for health and safety reasons. But I was back here, when would it have been? Probably September last year with my friend Andy and we rode around all three of the reservoirs and I never posted the video actually but it was very low then. This little bridleway here holds a very very interesting descent. The one I was talking about earlier on if I included that little snippet of video that heads over from Hag Farm and I've done it a few times and with my limited skills on a mountain bike it really is quite a beast. I use the brakes more than some do though. So here it is, the Derwent Dam Wall. And it was at this point here on the Derwent Dam where the dam busters practiced in World War II. The bouncing bomb devised by Barnes Wallace. So as of the 11th of the 4th, 16, the reservoirs were at 100%. I think this one, Derwent, is just below 100% because you can see the little lip at the top of the wall there. It's not quite flowing over the top like Howden was. But it's pretty close. So here we are, there's a plaque commemorating the, the feat. So I'm just about to pass Fair Homes now. Just down there is a great little uh, information centre, also a cafe as well, toilet facilities, and there's a cycle hire place there as well. You can cycle round this chain of three reservoirs as well and it's something I'd highly recommend doing on a nice warm day. At the weekend the road from this point here is closed as well so it's traffic free cycling. There's the cycle hire place and the cafe is just through there. But we're going to keep moving. No coffee and cake today sadly. So just shortly after Fair Homes you rise up the hill to a car park and when you get there there is a nice trail that leads off so we can get away from the road for a little while because this is the busiest part now up to fair homes itself a lot of traffic so it's nice to be down in the forest walking along this nicely graded path that's a little bit nicer underfoot than the road is here we are back once again at a very murky looking ash hopton viaduct You've also got Bamford Edge in the distance there. Okay, so the route in total was around about 12 and a half miles according to the Apple Watch and View Ranger. So it's a really great route. If you choose to do so though, you could shorten it at particular parts by parking further along the road up towards uh, Fair Homes. But it's a really great route and I really have had four seasons in one day today. So as I was saying earlier, welcome and thank you to all the new people that have subscribed thanks to the recommendation of Zed and to all the people that have continued to support over the years, a huge thank you to you as well. Okay, so thanks for watching this video. I'll see you on the next one. I've got a couple of quite big adventures coming up soon. Some of them aren't outdoor related, but it should be fun. Okay, so as always, thanks for watching, commenting, liking, everything that goes with it.
and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye for now.